Hello. In the last video, I made myself sound like a chipmunk by building and coding real-time repitch into an Arduino Uno. Check out this video before you watch this one. But with the festivities approaching, people like to sing. Unfortunately, not everybody sings perfectly. So in this video, we're going to update our real-time repitch algorithm to provide auto-tune to correct our singing when we're slightly out of tune. A good example of auto-tune pushed way too hard is the song Believe by Cher. You can actually hear her voice jump up and down whole notes as she sings. Auto-tune can be created in two ways. The simplest being manually after recording, but we want to do this in real time. So we're going to need a way to identify what note we're trying to sing and how far away we actually are from it. There are several algorithms that can do this. Some are more accurate than others, but I've settled on one called Yin. The Yin algorithm was developed by Alan de Chavin, apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly, and published in 2002. Now, I really don't like maths, and I'm pretty sure you don't want to be bored with it either. But if you do want to see how it works, then check out this video. Luckily for us, the algorithm already exists in code form, and we can just use it from this GitHub repository. So we'll plug that into our simple application, and we'll see what it can do. I've added the two libraries into the Arduino sketch, and I'm simply going to record some audio. When complete, I'll push it into the Yin algorithm, and we'll write the output to the serial port. We're recording the audio as before, but this time, just for testing, we'll stop when we reach 512 bytes. You'll see I've added a second buffer. The Yin algorithm uses an int16 buffer, so we'll have to convert to it. When I press compile, you'll see a notice warning about low memory. 87% of dynamic memory has been used. This will be a problem, because the Yin init function allocates length divided by two floats. That's about 1k of RAM. So clearly there isn't enough RAM to do this. So, rather than change my algorithm to use the int16, I'm going to change the yin algorithm to accept bytes instead. And there we have it. See, that's much better. 37% of the RAM used, 758 bytes. That leaves us plenty of space for the yin algorithm to do its thing. I found this website that will generate exact tones to help test this. So I'll upload this code to the Arduino and we'll try it out. You can see that as I change the frequency on the left, the debug window shows a fairly accurate guess. The one thing you may also notice is just how long the calculation is taking. Over one second. For our auto-tune to be responsive enough, this isn't helpful. So firstly, I want to check if it's the algorithm being slow or just because of all the recording we're doing. So I'll alter the program to just constantly keep requesting frequencies and seeing how long it takes, but without any recording. See how much faster it is now? So nearly all of the audio sampling we're doing is taking its toll on the spare CPU cycles. So what can we do about this? Well, like all things, we can optimise them for our specific purpose. So let's take a look at what's going on in the yin algorithm. You'll notice we call the yin get pitch function, so let's have a look what it's doing. If we take a look inside, you'll see it's made up of calls to lots of other functions. So I've changed this function so we can see how long each of those individual function calls is taking. OK, well, this is quite obvious that the first place we should look at is the yin difference function. The first thing that stands out to me is the output. Yin buffer is an array of floats, and doing lots of math on floats is slow. So let's do all the maths as an integer, and then save it as a float at the end. Wow, that's some speed improvement. But I think we can do a little better. The first thing I'm going to do is change to using a buffer that is static in size. This means all the loops will have hard-coded loop sizes. We're now using 90% of the available RAM. Let's see if that makes any improvements. Well, that's around 10 milliseconds faster. I'll take that. Let's see if we can improve it a little further. Now, we know our buffer is always going to be 512 bytes big. So the buffer this algorithm will be using is 256 bytes, as it seems it uses half the size. So, using this, let's change all the loop variables to be a single byte counter and see what that does. Looking at the code, total is calculated by delta multiplied by itself. Well, that number's always going to be positive, meaning we can use an unsigned type. Now, the value of delta could be anything from minus 255 to 255, so we'll leave that alone. So, now yin difference is down to 137 milliseconds, and an overall time of 146. It's still a little slow, but as you can see, it still works. But we still have a problem. When we upload it, the IDE tells us we have 188 bytes of RAM left. 
If we want to use this on the recorded audio, we need to make sure it's only a copy of the audio that isn't going to get overwritten while it's being analysed. So we'll need another 512 bytes of RAM to store that. And we just don't have that space available. Right now, 1k of RAM is taken up by the 256 floats used by the algorithm. So, I think it's time to get rid of those. I'll also get rid of some of the unused code. Instead of floats, we'll use a uint 16. Sure, we might lose a little bit of accuracy, but the space saving is worth it. Whilst doing this, I'll make a few more changes to the indifference function to see if it'll help speed up some more. After all these changes, we now have 800 bytes of RAM free. That's perfect. But does it still work? Phew! Yes, it does. It doesn't run any faster, but at least we have more RAM available. 150 milliseconds is a long time to wait for some audio before adjusting its pitch. I think we need to find a way to do this even faster. Seeing as most of the time is spent in this yin difference function, I wonder what else would happen if we skip some of the inner loops. I've adjusted the code to skip four samples every time. The big question is, will this mess up the accuracy? <laughs> well, that's reduced processing down to under 60 milliseconds. This means we can do this approximately 16 times a second. To think, this started at over one second and we've got it down to this. And testing it out? Well, it seems to be okay. The number's a little bit more jittery than it was. Let's just hope it doesn't cause a problem later on. Well, I guess we need to know what the ideal range of frequencies we need to detect in the first place is. According to the NCBI Library of Medicine, a female pitch voice generally ranges from 160 to 300 Hz, while a male's voice is around 60 to 180. Hmm, well I think we've found its lowest frequency. Now there's two things we can do to increase the range, or rather, lower the lowest detection point. One is to make the recording buffer bigger, but we don't have the RAM for that. So the other is to reduce the sample rate. I've opted for reducing the sample rate. Not only will this increase the speed of our program as the interrupt will be running at half as often, but also it should half the lowest detected frequency. Let's try that. Well, that seems to drop out just below 80 hertz. So as long as we haven't got Louis Armstrong singing, we should be good. So we can detect the pitch of the audio. We now need to dynamically adjust the pitch on the output based on the difference between what we've detected and the nearest note. So how can we work out the nearest note? Each octave has 12 notes. If we look at notes C2 to B2 and see the frequencies increasing, we'll notice the spacing between them isn't equal. So, to find out the nearest note to the frequency we've detected, using C2 65Hz as our minimum, we end up with a formula like this. And we can reverse that to find the frequency of the note like this. So I've created a function called get nearest note frequency. Let's test it out. It's guessing them notes really good, but what about if I slowly increase between notes? Not bad. I suppose it could be a little bit more accurate. I guess if we unmodified the loop that we messed with before, that would help. It all depends how responsive you want this to be. So, we need to be able to access the buffer of audio without it being modified. If we did a mem copy to copy the data to another buffer in the interrupt, it would take far too long. Instead, I've opted for a request response setup. When the main loop is ready for processing, it requests a buffer of audio by setting the buffer requested boolean to true. It then waits in the loop until that's set back to false. Now in the interrupt, while that's true, it starts copying and filling the processing buffer, and when complete, sets the flag back to false again. We then run the yin algorithm to find out what the frequency detected is, find the closest frequency, or the nearest note to that frequency, and then compensate playback speed to adjust for this. I've also added the code back in to allow our rotary encoder to work, so we can force a pitch change while still being locked to a note. We can also switch on and off the auto-tune, and I've also added a multicolour LED as an indicator showing what's happening. You might note that I've moved the switch from the shaft encoder to pin 12, as I want to take advantage of the PWM on pin 10. But you'll notice no code in the main loop to handle this, as I've moved it all into an interrupt. There's so much going on in the main loop now that the shaft encoder would be quite unresponsive. So the revised schematic now looks like this. And my breadboard is starting to look a bit of a mess. And I've started to have problems with wires falling out and bad connections. So I've soldered everything down to make it easier. I've also switched to using an Arduino Pro Mini in the process. So let's take a look at that. I found another website that will show you the frequency and note of the audio detected. Probably using a similar algorithm to what we're using. Except this is going to be listening to the output of our Arduino. 
To help you see what's going on, the left audio channel will contain the original sound, and the right will contain the repitched audio from the Arduino. So you'll need to listen carefully. As I slowly increase the frequency, the detected frequency more or less remains constant, until suddenly it switches to the next note. You can see this going on on the LED as well as it moves from red to blue, indicating how far away you are from the nearest note. Whilst I have separated the signals between left and right audio channels, it's still quite hard to hear. So I'm going to replay a short amount of this so you can hear the difference. Here's the original. And here's the output from the Arduino. You can definitely hear the difference this time. It's so sad that you're leaving. It takes time to believe it. So as you can see, it's locking to the nearest frequency and trying its best to keep there. That is the basics of auto-tune. If you wanted a more extreme version, you could change the allowed notes or the spacing between them. Quite clearly, this isn't going to win any singing awards. The quality and accuracy is very poor. However, this could be improved with a faster CPU, more RAM and sampling in 16-bit, as well as filtering out some of the glitches caused by the repitching algorithm. If you want me to have a go at that in the future, then leave a comment down below. While you're doing that, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons too. I hope you found this interesting, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.